backed it up in Colossians, first chapter, verses 15 and 16, who is the image of the invisible God, firstborn of all creation, yeah. for by him were all things created in heaven and in the earth, both visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, powers, or dominions, all things were created by him yeah. and for him. Yeah. Not by him for another God. Yeah. Church of God in Christ, I hope you hear me. God didn't give Jesus permission to make the world. Jesus didn't need no permission. He said, I'll do my pleasure and who shall let me? Who's going to stop him? He's God all by himself. Isaiah 45 and 5. Give me Isaiah 45 and 5 right quick. And then we're going to cut right over to Hebrews and straighten out uh, this teaching of the Seventh-day Adventists. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. And there is none else. There's what? None else. Now who said that? First person seeing the pronoun, I am the Lord. Now, Isaiah is quoting from what God told him to put into scriptural form. Amen. I am the Lord, there is none else. Amen. There is no God beside me. There is no God beside me. Well, Jesus on the right hand of the Father. Well, now somebody is incorrect. Amen. If Jesus is on the right hand of the Father and God said beside me there's no God, then, the, then we've, got to, we've got to start trying to figure out what's going on here. We've got to get some knowledge. We've got to wake up from the sleep. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, so the right hand of the Father meant the visible presence of the invisible spirit. Amen. We just identified Colossians first chapter. God as the spirit is invisible. Amen. But the personality of God or the invisible spirit is Jesus. Yes. He's the embodiment of the invisible spirit. Amen. So right hand simply meant the authority or the visible presence visible presence of the invisible spirit. Yes. That's why John said I looked up into heaven and one sat on the throne, Hallelujah. not no two or three. Amen. Praise Amen. God. So we have to again understand right division of the scripture. If you don't rightly divide the word of God, Amen. you can never come into a full knowledge of who he is. Hallelujah. And I say to those watching who may be caught up in the Seventh Day Adventist movement, your heart might be true and right. You might have the most wonderful character but that's not going to save you. Hallelujah. It's the word of God Hallelujah. that's going to save you. Yes, Through the foolishness of preaching Amen. are they saved. And I'm here to preach you Hallelujah. into an understanding, Amen. a higher learning, Hallelujah. that again you can come out of that false religion. Yes. Anytime you recognize a trinity of God, you're in a false religion. Yes. And you need to leave away from there in a hurry. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And if there's no place for you to go in holiness, you stay at home, turn that YouTube on, yes, and watch Prophet Walker. Amen. Amen. I will teach you the truth and guide you in the pathway of righteousness that you might have a resting place one day for your soul. Amen. Amen. And I'm not saying that to try to uh, build no accolades for myself. Amen. 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 I'm doing this because God has called me to bring to the unity of one spirit all those who truly seek eternal life. Amen. Amen. All right, in the book of Hebrews, let's correct this Seventh day Adventist movement right now. Uh, Matter of fact, just read me question one. Bishop Walker, you state that the Sabbath day of worship is not mandatory. Explain. All right, let's let's explain. Uh, go to Hebrews. Let's jump right into verse nine. Uh, chapter nine, pardon me, verse eighteen. Now again. We're going to explain uh, that question, uh, why the Sabbath is not mandatory. Amen. All right, right from verse 18. Whereupon neither the first testament was d dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats, with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkle both the book and all the people. Uh -huh. saving, Saying, this is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Now here we are showing the day of sacrifice. Yes. Now I'm saying to the Seventh Day Adventists, if you honor the Sabbath and you keep all those sacrifices, Amen. I guarantee you on the day of atonement, you don't sacrifice no animal. I promise you, you don't. So therefore, you in error of your own instruction. You keep the day of atonement, but you ain't keeping it according to 
description. Amen. Now, Jesus became the sacrifice once and for all. Yes. So, therefore, we don't have to follow no day of atonement. We ain't got to kill no animal. God. Praise God. All right, read. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost, according to, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. All things according to the law, are purged by blood. Yes. Anytime you make a sacrifice on the Day of Atonement, that sacrifice has to be a blood sacrifice. But Jesus Christ became the sacrifice for the new covenant. Yes. He said there's no such thing as God doing away with the law. Well, what you got to understand is rightly dividing. No, Jesus didn't come to do away with the law, but he did come to fulfill. Hallelujah. Yeah, now, there's a difference, and you've got to rightly interpret what that means. To fulfill means there was a certain segment of the law that had been completed after his death, burial, and resurrection. Now, again, I want you to take note in Acts, the second chapter, we're talking about now why I don't keep the Sabbath and hold, hold it holy. First of all, in the New Testament covenant, there is no specific day to keep holy. Amen. you got to understand that. You can't just take the Sabbath and keep that holy. If you keep the Sabbath and you just keep the Sabbath holy, what about Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday? Amen. So therefore, you can smoke and drink liquor and do what you want to do Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. But Saturday, i got to keep that holy. So if you make it a distinction between a holy day there is no such thing as a holy day because every day now is holy unto the Lord. I mean, the scripture said, present your body as a what? Living, Living sacrifice. Holy. How? Holy. holy and acceptable unto the Lord. Now, when you get saved, converted, changed, now you have to present your body as a vessel unto the Lord. Amen. Know you not that your temple is the temple of God. Your body is the temple of the living God. Yes. And if you defile this temple, the Bible said, Him shall God destroy. Yes. So when a saved person gets saved, you can't be playing no game talking about, whoa, today is Saturday. I can't, I can't drink today. I can't smoke today. Yes. Hallelujah. No, you can't drink. You can't smoke no day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we've got to understand about this so-called keeping the Sabbath holy. Now let's turn to Acts and uh, where do I want to go? Second chapter, jump right into verse 46. Keep the Sabbath holy. In the early church, they had church seven days a week. They didn't just have church on Saturday. And again, I don't have anything wrong. I don't, there's no way. I find fault with anybody who wants to have church on Saturday. Amen. I've said this before. Amen. Matter of fact, there was times we had church on Saturday Amen. when it was convenient. When it was not convenient, we, we didn't have church on Saturday. Amen. But I don't have anything against anyone going to church on Saturday. Amen. But don't you find fault with me for going to church on Sunday, Amen. Monday, Amen. Wednesday, Amen. Friday. Shame on you when you don't understand the scripture. Amen. The early church had church every day. We're going to prove this. All right, read. And they continually daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Breaking bread. bread. Now, the Bible says Jesus was the bread of life. I believe that's around John the 6th chapter. We said, I am the bread of life. If you eat of this bread, you won't hunger no more. Now, the bread of life or the bread that they were talking about, they went from house to house, daily drinking bread. It wasn't talking about no physical, natural type of bread. It was talking about spiritual bread from the Word. Yes. The apostle was teaching them the Word of God. So when you understand that they had church every day, yeah. how can you find fault with anyone who has church, whether it's on Friday, Monday, or Sunday, or Saturday? Yeah. It doesn't make any difference when you have church. As long as when you have church, you make sure you're having church in the spirit of church. Yeah. Ain't no sense in going to church and teaching a trinity. Yeah. Ain't no sense in going to church <coughs> yeah. and teaching things that are not of the apostles' doctrine. Yeah. Have church on Saturday? That's fine. But you have church on Saturday and baptize 